Uh, well, really didn't know how to approach this. What was supposed to be making a video about Woodward is turning into this. Yeah, I figured I would just go ahead and just throw a video out there, explain what's going on and kind of what to expect. So we were on our way up. I was on my way up. It's about four hours, almost on the nose from here, here to where I was going um, to stay. And yeah, beautiful trip all the way up. Stop maybe like an hour out, you know, hit the head, top the fuel off, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, was finishing up the drive, no issue. She cruised great. You know, no complaints. Until about five minutes out. Um, yeah, was watching the GPS, had five minutes left, was uh, switching lanes to move around to get ready to make the turn I needed to turn. Then uh, I heard and felt like a thump. Motor goes quiet. Um, you know, it starts jumbling, still in gear, so I immediately threw it through the neutral, coast off to the side. Um, still on my power, radio still playing, everything. Yeah, I got to the side, and um, so I turned off, went to try to maybe start it. Maybe I don't, you know, no idea what happened. You know, literally just moving the lane over, was going, and um, tried to turn it over again, and nothing. Just you know, big old clunk and. Um, it actually caused my main breaker to pop. So I reset that, got under the hood, smelled a lot of oil, um, but immediately didn't see nothing dripping. So I was really confused. Um, I had a couple people that were kind of anticipating my arrival. So uh, I reached out to them, let them know where I was, that I was pretty much stranded at that point. Immediately, we're just ready to jump in the car and, and come help out. Um, both are named Alex, funny enough. Um, you guys know who you are watching this, I'm sure. But, um, you know, one from an hour away, one wasn't too far away. He was already kind of in the Woodward area, um, and I was in Utica. So he immediately was shooting over to see what he can do to help. Um, the other one was working up a way to try to help get me you know to a safer location because i was on the side of a highway a pretty busy highway at that shortly after i made those phone calls um pd actually had pulled up i was literally right by an on-ramp he pulls up the on-ramp checking on see what's going on make sure i'm all right told him what happened um so he immediately jumped down on the highway and you know set up behind me to try to hopefully help you know block from me getting hit yeah told him what the deal was so i was five minutes from my hotel just drove four hours you know, it's almost 9.30 at night at this point. And, you know, the most logical thing was just get it to the hotel and then deal with it in the morning. Um, so he makes a couple phone calls for me, uh, gets a private tow out to me, uh, who was real nice, load the car up real good, no problems. Um, took me down the road, didn't didn't kill the bank. Well, obviously I gotta pay for a tow, but it wasn't wasn't crazy. So that was real nice, you know. And the fact that he was able to take it where I wanted it. Um, so we get up to the hotel. He drops in a spot for me. Um, and the one Alex pulled up. And so he gets out. We just kind of talk about it. He's helped me look it over. We're crawling underneath trying to figure out, you know, what went wrong. Because still at this point, I mean, I had maybe, I don't know, maybe this big, you know, of a puddle under the car when we, when I was on the side of the highway. So I was definitely confused. So finally, um, I brought a bigger light. I shoved it under the car and he was able to like shove his phone up underneath and he was just blindly recording to see if we could figure it out. And uh, sure enough, I mean, I can't see it now, but um, between cylinders three and five on the upper part of the oil pan, there's probably a one by one hole. So my guess, I really don't know. Um, but obviously that's probably a rod let go and bust out the side of the oil pan, evacuated all my oil probably immediately, and the motor locked up. At this point, I really don't have a cause. I really, like I said, I was literally just cruising. Um, I do beat this car. I built it to, to beat on it. Um, and had I been beating on it, I 
I wouldn't be as confused and I really wouldn't be as upset as I am just because if I'm beating on the car, I expected the break. You know what I mean? That's you're asking for trouble in a way. Um, but the fact that I was only cruising was only getting close to my destination. And after four hours of driving already, then it just randomly lets go. At this point, motor is done, at least the bottom half. And basically I just want to come on here and let you guys know I'm kind of in a gray area what what I want to do. Brad and Albert, I mean, obviously the, my group of people, um, some of the people, you know, that I'm closer with in the group, in the Grand Am group, you know, always elf, offering to help out and stuff. Um, definitely don't want to see the car go anywhere. Obviously want to fix it up, but being this late in the season with all kinds of this stuff going on, I just, I don't know if it's in the cards to get it back on the road. Um, there are a couple routes. There is a motor sitting right there that ran and drove. Um, it's a stock 3.4. I mean, that that's a possibility. I could throw that right in there and run it with no issue. Um, and I could make it so that it's more safe, you know. Um, but if I do something like that, if I'm throwing a stock motor in there, then I'm not gonna obviously beat on it. It's literally just gonna get it so we can drive it around. Being that we have the grade A meet coming up and this, you know, this is one of the cars everyone wants to see and um, the body kit car is gonna be torn apart. It's really gonna leave like no Grand Ams on our end. You know, we're gonna be hosting a Grand Am meet with no Grand Ams. Definitely just tabling it for now. You know, it's mid-August. We have to end of September to figure this out. Um, I've got a lot of stuff coming up between work and, and what else. So it's not even in the cards to even mess with this thing right now. Um, really horrible timing. So here she's gonna sit for a while, um, maybe tinker with it here and there, start tearing it apart and at least get the motor out. Just gonna let you guys know I'm not going nowhere, but it's, there's probably gonna be a lot of radio silence for a while, um, probably till at least the beginning of September. Those wondering, that's uh, that's what's going on at this point. But luckily we, we did get her home safely. Thanks to my buddies, um, always, always at the jump, let them know what's going on. And by Saturday, uh, like one o'clock Saturday afternoon, they were there with the truck and trailer. So always thankful for them. You know, it's good to have a close group of friends for things like that. You know, not everyone's just gonna jump in a, jump in a truck and drive four hours to come save someone else. So definitely thankful for that. Thankful that nothing worse happened. Um, as upset as I am, we've been this motor I've had since 2016, it's been boosted since 2017. Um, it's been from Canada to Florida, Wisconsin, Michigan so many times. Uh, janky tunes, boosting, random issues that should have blown it before but never did. Um, the fact that it just, I gotta look at it as that way. It just blew a motor and nothing else bad happened. As devastating as this is, not as bad as as it seems to be so as always thanks for watching thanks for keeping up and uh i promise we'll be back and yeah see you on the next one